Consultants. Marco Mack rejoins us in the new year. He's the head of research at Thai Fook Securities here in Hong Kong. Good to see you once again, Marco. Good morning. Let me just ask you your predictions uh, for Hong Kong stocks. First off, uh, the HSI trading at 22,000, as you mentioned before. Yeah. Where's it headed for 2010? I think for the year as a whole, I think uh, the upside may be about 20% because uh, the index is up 50%, more than 50% already. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, an estimate of 20% should be quite reasonable. Yeah, 20% is not bad not for bad, a year, yeah. is it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> what about the H shares index? Is that going to be in line with HSI or could it actually outperform? But in fact, I think uh, if you look at the past performance, uh, the H shares are usually more volatile. Mm -hmm. So I think the trading range will be much, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, maybe wider than the Hansen Index. So I would expect the upside maybe around 30%. 30% or so yeah. for the eight shares index. But also that means uh, more volatility for the eight shares. Mm. Yeah. And what about for policy tightening? As I mentioned, mm. Deutsche Bank says uh, this rally may fade in the second quarter as yeah. the Chinese government may step in when we see inflation taking hold. Do you think that's actually going to happen? Uh, although I think the major concern this year will be rising interest rate on the back of a rising inflation, but I think uh, up to now we still not seen very serious threat on this side. Uh, mm -hmm. So people, you know, already discounting the potential risk in the market. Yeah. yeah. And what about today? Speaking of risk, uh, you, you heard the Chinese authority coming out and saying uh, we're mm. going to see moderate loan yeah. growth this year as opposed to the credit boom that we saw in yeah. 2009. What does that say to you? Does that say that tightening may be on its way? I think that's no surprise because you, you can remember that uh, new loan growth uh, last year was very bad. So I think uh, the, the consolidation this year should be, you know, well expected. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, not necessarily, you know, a serious or drastic tightening. Uh, but I think the banks themselves will, you know, try to slow down the, slow down the new grounds. Yeah. yeah. And what does that mean? Does that mean you avoid Chinese banks then? Uh, so I would believe uh, China banks will not be, uh, you know, the exciting counters this year. So it won't be our top picks. Uh. Yeah, in fact, uh, yeah. your top picks, which is interesting, are, uh, you know, these uh, construction plays or these real estate plays such as Shui on land, yeah. China overseas. But first, uh, before we get to them, let's talk about this one stock that you've been talking about for a long time. Of course, I'm talking about a Lenovo 992HK yeah. is the uh, stock ticker for you. And you said to buy the stock back in September. It's gained 48% yeah. since then. And yeah. uh, things are looking pretty upbeat for this stock. You said it could gain maybe 4 or $5 back yeah. then. What about now? We're trading at five Hong Kong dollars. Where's yeah. it going to go? I still believe, uh, you know, you can hold the counters for another maybe one or two years. Uh, because uh, I think the PC market in the China will be very exciting going forward. Mm -hmm. I think uh, people only the PC, we would like uh, only the mobile phone at the moment. So you can imagine that the penetration in China will increase very substantially mm -hmm. for the PCs. Mm -hmm. You know, China's, China people, uh, you know, like to go to the internet. Uh, I think you can see that uh, the penetration of PC in the football areas are still very low. Mm -hmm. So I think that's huge potential to go mm -hmm. for, for PCs in China. Uh, did, did I hear you correctly? Did you say that you might want to hold Lenovo stock for the next one or two years? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I think uh, the counter will still be in, in, in the upswings for the at least one or two years. Yeah. I think so. I, I'm, I'm not in a hurry to take any profit. Not yet. Yeah. Even though 2009 was a tough year for Lenovo, it actually yeah. lost money. During that I period. think the worst is over, uh, yeah. and also I think the, uh, after the acquisition of IBM PC, the consolidation took uh, four years already. So I think um, going forward, I think everything looks quite quite good. Okay, at what point? Give me a dollar figure. When would you take profit on Lenovo? I would rather you know at top and uh, you know buy on dips strategy <laughs> rather than taking profit. Uh -huh. I will hold the counter for, for the medium term. Okay, so let's stay on this consumer theme because it seems to be a lot of people's picks yeah. for the Chinese market. And uh, your, your second one, your se second name here, it's a car company. You're, you're advising clients to buy Brilliance China, yeah. which is BMW's partner yeah, yeah. on yeah. the mainland, and it might be teaming up with Toyota in yeah. the future. And again, like other car stocks have seen traded here in Hong Kong, a mm. great 2009, up 500% uh, yeah. during that time. But I was checking the P.E. ratio mm. for uh, this year's earnings, pretty, uh, pretty lofty, I would say, 95 times yeah. P.E. Well, that means uh, the earnings potential is not yet fully reflected. Uh, so people pay a high PG for this stock mm -hmm. uh, because uh, you know the production of uh, BMW cars is still at a low level. They're trying to 
uh, double their capacity or even triple, you know, in the years ahead. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I will believe, uh, you know, uh, demand will be good enough to, to absorb all the increased production. Okay. Yeah. Return on equity, not the pr positive for Brilliance mm -hmm. China, down 9% uh, or so in the uh, last 12 months. And also there's a lot of controversy mm -hmm. with its founder yeah. being investigated. But why is Brilliance China a better bet than, say, Geely or Denway or Dongfang? which also gained yeah. you know, triple digits in 2009. Yeah. I think last year the demand, you know, mainly on the, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, low price vehicles uh, because of the government stimulus measures. Mm -hmm. But going forward, I think uh, when, you know, when, when the more ha wealthy uh, consumers go to the market, they will, you know, trace up, uh, you know, luxury items. So I think, uh, as I said, uh, PC actually is a more luxury item in the you know, uh, home appliance sector. And for the car sector, I think uh, BMW is a luxury item mm -hmm. uh, compared with uh, the cars are produced by you know, uh, Geely. Mm -hmm. uh, so going forward, I think the focus, uh, the, the, the demand will shift to luxury items in yeah. China. Quickly, Marco, we're going to commercial break here, but what's the potential upside for Brilliance China? Again, I think this uh, counter could be good for medium-term investment. Mm -hmm. So just uh, add on to the portfolio for the this one or two years. Okay, Marco. Yeah.